Concussion or a subconcussive blow is an acute event. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE in contrast, is a progressive disorder where the symptoms appear years to decades after the exposure to repetitive mild traumatic brain injury has occurred. But just like concussions, there are really three domains of symptoms. So we have cognitive symptoms like memory loss, trouble with concentration and focus, impaired decision making, impaired judgment. Devastating psychiatric symptoms like depression, explosive behaviors, aggressive, uh, impulsive behavior, drug and alcohol addiction, and really this, is, this combination of depression, impulsivity, and alcohol and drugs is a recipe for disaster and for suicide. So there have been quite high rates of suicides in, in these players. And then there are physical symptoms that range from the headaches and dizziness that you might experience after a concussion to some of the movement problems and motor problems that Dr. Gardner talked about, specifically slow and stiff movements or tremors as is seen in Parkinson's disease, or even muscle weakness and wasting as we see in Lou Gehrig's disease. And CTE can be associated with any or a combination of any of these symptoms. Here you see on the left a normal brain uh, post-mortem, and on the right you see a brain of someone who died with CTE. And I'll point out just some of the differences. They may be obvious. One is that the patient with CTE has significant brain atrophy. So here you see the gray matter and the white matter of the healthy brain. Um, you see the gyri or the peaks of the brain and the sulci or the valleys, and you can see that the brain tissue is quite full. In contrast, in this person with CTE, you can see that there's a lot more space between areas of brain tissue. The gyri or peaks are smaller, and the sulci or valleys are deeper. So there's brain atrophy. These black areas here are filled with spinal fluid in the living uh, person. These are called the ventricles. And in CTE, you see that in, in contrast to the collapsed ventricles here in the healthy brain, you see that the ventricles are enlarged or expanded. And that's really spinal fluid filling the space that used to be occupied by brain tissue. But now with atrophy of the brain tissue, the spinal fluid expands to fill that space. And then finally, I'll point out um, a finding here in a membrane that separates the ventricles and the two sides of the brain called the septum pellucidum. In most people, this is just a single thin membrane. But what happens with repeated traumatic brain injury is that there are tears that occur in that membrane with sudden changes in pressure in the spinal fluid spaces, such that eventually a third space is created. So you see here a single space, and here really, here are the two ventricles. Here's a third space called a cavum septum pellucidum. And this is very often seen also at autopsy and CTE.